So I wanted to do a deep dive on how TikTok is helping spread mental health issues, as well as helping indoctrinate the next generation with woke trash. But then I came across these kinds of videos, compilations of woke LGBT TikToks, and I've always held the firm belief that letting people speak is the best way to let them showcase their views, or in this case, their extensive mental health decline. So what better way to show you TikTok's influence on our society than to react to videos directly from the source? Let's watch some woke TikToks. I haven't seen any of them yet, so this should be interesting. I have a hard time hiding how I feel in real time, so I apologize in advance if I'm a little bit of a bitch. So I will be honest, I did see the first clip because when I was, you know, looking for the video, you know, the first clip happens really fast, so I was able to see what happens. Um, so my reaction to that is not going to be authentic because I already saw it, but I do want you to watch it so that you can see what was happening. What the hell is even that? God, and it just literally keeps going like, right. I already saw that, so you needed to see my reaction when I first saw that. It was fucking crazy. That's a lot. That's already a lot. Let's just go to the next one. Hi, I'm Nadine, a sex educator. And I'm Eva, a sex researcher. I use the pronouns she and her because I'm a woman. And when I was your age, I used to be a girl. Gender is how you feel on the inside oh. about whether oh, wow. you're a boy or a girl. A man, Real young, huh? A man or a woman. If you're non-binary, feel like neither or both. People can also be fluid, feel more like female, more like male, on a, based on a different day or time. It's really individual. Absolutely. Everyone born with a vulva. So first of all, I just want to point out, because it seems like there's more to this video, I just want to point out how uninterested they all looked while she was talking. Does that look like children who care about what she's talking like about, female, like who male, understand? They seem so confused and they, they just don't look like they care. It's really individual. Absolutely. Everyone born with a vulva is a girl. True or false? Or identifies as a girl. Not everybody is sure, and that makes sense. But our genitals actually don't determine our gender. So some people born with vulvas can be boys. Gender creative parenting? Really? Is that so? So I have the perfect example to this, the perfect counter argument. If, let's just say, somebody who says that they are a woman, they identify as a woman, and they go to the hospital and they say, doctor, doctor, I need help. I'm, I'm having a miscarriage. I, I need help. And then the doctor goes to help that person to look at their vulva, their cervix, their vagina, their uterus, and they have this person undress, get on one of those whatever tables. What do you think this doctor is going to tell this person who is allegedly having a miscarriage, who allegedly has a vulva, a cervix, a vagina? What do you think this doctor is going to say when he instead sees a penis and has somebody coming in to say that they are having a miscarriage? How do you think that would work? Right. Gender creative parenting is a better option for parenting than assigning kids genders at birth. Hey, Davey. Yes? If a person doesn't feel like they're a boy or a girl, what do we call them? They. I'm detransitioning. So that was, I guess that was like back to back. I think it's really interesting how children are learning this really, really early before they really even have an opportunity to associate any characteristics to gender. There are certain characteristics to gender that are very important for boys and girls to have. For example, when boys and girls go into that class in fifth or sixth grade where they start learning about puberty and things like that, it's very important that they are placed in a room where their body parts align with what they are hearing. Because when you put a child into a room where let's say that a boy says that they are a girl, when you put this boy into the room with the girls and this boy starts to hear more and more about body parts that 
he does not have, that's just going to cause more and more confusion. And I mention that because it seems like these children are learning this earlier and earlier and earlier before they even have an opportunity to go to these, uh, you know, to fifth and sixth grade where they learn the early stages of sex ed. Most people, most children, learn. I learned that in starting fifth and, uh, fifth and sixth grade. And for context, this is what I used to look like. And then I looked like this, and now I look like this. I think that if somebody wants to transition, they should still transition. I think that we should support trans teens and trans kids. I think that we should support underprivileged trans adults. I think that we should stop pushing this idea that we know better for somebody else. Because I would have never known even an iota of who I am now if I hadn't transitioned. And this is okay. I'm gonna stop this person right there. I'm gonna stop. I, I I'm sorry. I can't even tell what this person is. So I'm just gonna say this person. You guys don't think that this person, instead of going through 17 transitions, three in this case, obviously I'm just being a dick. You guys don't think that this person would have benefited much more from psychological attention, going to a psychologist, a therapist, going to somebody that they can speak to about these issues instead of going through all of these changes. Because I'm sorry, to me, it seems like this individual seems to be having some sort of mental health issue. I think that's fair to say. This is coming from somebody who literally has a dissociative disorder. You should look at our page. I don't blame the doctors. I thank the doctors. I don't blame other trans people. I thank other trans people. And I thank trans women for helping me understand my own femininity and pointing out when we were experiencing a lot of different types of dysphoria. By the way, DID in and of itself is not a delusion-based condition. I never had a delusion about who I was or what I was experiencing. I just had doctors who were on my side and who helped me be able to figure it out one way or the other. I'm not ruined. Let people be. Okay, so I agree with this person. I don't think anybody here is ruined, but I think that we can all benefit from getting a little help. And it seems to be very clear, like this person just had a lot of doctors say, yes, 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 yes. When someone should have actually come in and said no. And who knows if this person just went to one doctor, heard yes, and left, or if this person heard no, and then went to multiple other doctors and got help from the people that decided they wanted to assist in this person's issues, whatever you want to call it. Um, what I will say is there's nothing wrong with having a mental health issue. The problem is having a mental health issue that is untreated because it becomes an issue not just for other people, but most importantly for you. Because it seems like this person has gone through a lot. And I'm sorry, but other people around you fucking suck. Totally, yeah. Uh, technically, a gender-affirming piercing can be any piercing that you get that affirms your gender. Think of, you know, earlobe piercings for women. But when a lot of people say this term, they're referring specifically to piercings that help with bottom dysphoria for trans people. The specific piercings that I got are inner labes. A lot of trans masculine people will get these piercings and get them done at a large gauge and wear big heavy jewelry in it and it can emulate balls. And when you're wearing this type of jewelry in these piercings, it can affect the way that you have to sit and stand and walk in a way that makes your body language appear more masculine. A lot of people also just find it really affirming to have that physical weight there. If you want to hear more about what my experience getting these piercings was like and what they're like so far for me, go to the next video. What's up? No, <laughs> no, stop. Like what? We're not going to the next one yet. What? Piercings that make you forcibly sit different because of discomfort. I'm sorry, this is going to get a little TMI, but when you're a man and you have balls, shout out to my boys. Um, They're like, when you're of a certain age, they're a little, okay, they're easy to maneuver. So you can move them if you feel uncomfortable. You don't have to forcibly sit different because of that. I'm a guy and sometimes I sit with my legs crossed, but wow, okay, holes in your body to emulate balls. That's new. The unpopular opinion that you have about parents and that you know it's gonna make a lot of parents mad. If you've been following me long enough, you know what I'm about to talk about. Um, Wait, isn't this the to person from this, I am not telling anybody how to parent their child. This is specifically what I feel is best. And that is that gender creative parenting is a better option for parenting than assigning kids genders at birth and then having them tell you if it's different later. And I say that because by not assigning any gender at birth and treating their gender as an unknown, 
it gives them so much more opportunity to explore gender identity in all of its facets instead of having this preconceived notion of what gender is that was pushed on them based off of their genital appearance. So again, not telling anybody how to parent, but that's my two cents. And that's why we're raising our kiddo the way we are. You don't have to like it, but you will respect it. And if you don't respect it, I'm going to block you real fast. Also, no hate in the comments because that gets blocked. So how about giving children the opportunity to do what they feel comfortable with when they're old enough? How about we are usually comfortable with not allowing teenagers to have surgeries? We're usually not comfortable with them asking to get tattoos or piercings in weird places. For many parents, piercings, period. We don't allow them to do things like that, but we were told that we should be comfortable with allowing, allowing our children to come to us and say, mom, dad, I'm 13 years old. They told me in school that I could cut off my breast and that's what I want to do. Now, obviously, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to tell you here that, you know, we're just going to tell children that transgender people exist or you can, you know, non-binary people exist. I know that it doesn't just happen overnight. I'm not a fucking idiot. But I know a lot of people that it wasn't overnight. Maybe it took a few months, but it happened. I know a few people my age that went through that. So I can just imagine if people my age are being hyper influenced to suddenly decide that they want to change their gender, I can't imagine how easy it would be for an elementary schooler, a middle schooler to be influenced by things like that. I think it's inappropriate to give your child just the opportunity to be nothing and then say, find yourself. As a parent, it's your responsibility to give your children the tools to succeed and then let them succeed. But then being like, here is nothing. Find your way home. Here is nothing. Find your way to success. Good luck. You're going to have a failure of a child. And unfortunately, from the sounds of it, you're a failure of a parent. So get your shit together. Okay, so Mother's Day is tomorrow. And this is the second day that's rolled around. There's two different days in the year that I question. There's Mother's Day and there's Father's Day. As a trans person, as a trans woman, which one do I celebrate? Father's Day rolled around. I did. I don't feel like a father. Mother's Day is tomorrow. I feel like a mom, but who celebrates me? It's not a situation of pity me or anything. I just I genuinely want to know, is there other people out there that you don't know which one you fall under? Are you a mom? Are you a dad? Where's Parents' Day? Why can't we just have a Parents' Day? Like you're a parent... That's worth celebrating. Why does it have to be one or the other? It actually bothers me a lot. And I didn't think about that till today. And I don't know. I'm such an asshole. <laughs> I'm such an asshole. Okay, I didn't mean to laugh. You know, I kind of feel bad for Shrek. But let's be honest here. Again, it seems very obvious that there is some sort of mental health issue going around there is a dire need for many individuals in our country to get extensive mental health help it just needs to happen immediately because it seems very obvious that this individual has just no compass just based off the merit of gender and it's sad because it's like you're not your body parts and that's supposedly the vibe that the, the moral message of these individuals. It's, it's insane because one side of me just wants to think that it's just a call for attention from these grown men. But another side of me genuinely thinks that this is just another spout of mental illness. Story time. This has been my first year in preschool with a class of my own teaching alongside another queer neurodivergent educator. And we have- I'm been sorry, but before anybody says anything, the eyes are giving me real scary and we have been rocking our twos class we've been talking about gender and skin color and consent and empathy and our bodies and autonomy it's been fabulous so today at the lunch table when the topic of gender and genitals came up one of our students plainly looked up and said well i'm a girl today but i know that teacher ko isn't no they're nb and the look on what the fuck is an mb the incoming teacher's face was 
priceless. She was shocked in a good way. And she just looked around at the two of us and said, this class is incredible. And I am so hmm. impressed. So do you feel comfortable with the educators that are teaching your children daily? And then they say that this stuff isn't being treated, uh, being taught in schools when it very clearly is that there aren't people who very clearly, maybe not some sort of FBI, CIA, you know, group that got together to infiltrate the schools and be super woke. But clearly there's some individuals in school within the vicinity of schools, teachers that have their own agendas that they push onto students and they're not they're not all this crazy i've seen some that are just with the pride flag in the in the classroom but this is just like unhinged face tie makeup you put makeup on it mm -hmm. how old are you seven no how old are you seven you're four no it's seven are you a boy or a girl a girl a girl mm -hmm. were you born a girl Hmm? Were you born a girl? Yes. When you were a baby, were you a girl? Yes. Are you in a boy's body, though? Mm, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, tell TikTok bye. Bye. Super duper young. Again, younger and younger every time that we see it. Younger and younger every time that we see it. Now, I don't have a problem with a boy wearing makeup. I used to be a, a boy that used to play in his mom's makeup when I was a little kid. That's not the problem. Let kids be kids and be and be dumb and explore and whatever. And I, I don't know. Let, let them, you know, if they, if they want to hold a truck and, and sometimes they want to go ahead and play with their sister's Barbies, whatever. You You do what feels right for you as a parent. Whether or not that's okay, that's up to you. That's not a problem for me. The main issue is the, are you a girl? So automatically, because your child is into makeup, playing and dress up, whatever, they have to be a girl. Again, I've said this in prior videos, but what happened to just embracing, you know, people like James Charles? I think James Charles, when he came out into the scene, he was like, what, 16 or something like that? So he was, you know, obviously he's a weirdo now. We've, we've had that confirmed, but he was just a kid that liked to play in makeup. And there's many kids that just like to play in makeup. So I, I don't know why automatically if, if a child is into things that are maybe predominantly more attributed to women or to femininity, why automatically we have to question their gender. Super weird. What scientific fucking perspective? It's a story about a mermaid. Those don't even exist. There's an octopus lady that steals people's voices and a singing Jamaican crab! Who gives a fuck? Tips on so I did a video on this too. And I think it's so interesting how no one can see how virtue signally that was. If you can even say that's that as a word. It was literally just virtue signaling. And I think that that was people's main problem. It was that they didn't create a new story about a black little mermaid what they did was they got the old original ip slapped a black woman on it with not red hair for whatever reason and decided to call it a reimagining a retelling of an original classic story when they didn't do anything they didn't reimagine anything they didn't give anybody representation because realistically speaking again it was virtue signaling there was no historical background on her or anything like that. It wasn't a, I don't know, an actual reimagining, a new story. Maybe, I don't know, in part two, it could have been a, they could have gotten together the Little Mermaids and it could have been a thing. No, they didn't do that. They didn't give anybody representation. Halle, Halle Bailey's, and again, I said this in my Little Mermaid video, Halle Bailey's V Magazine shoot could have been what we could have gotten. But alas, we didn't get that. We got virtue signaling. So that's why people were fucking mad. Intersex ally. 
When it comes to inclusive language, oftentimes people tend to use phrases like people with penises or people with vaginas rather than saying male and female or men and women. While this can absolutely be inclusive for trans people, unfortunately it's not always the most inclusive language for intersex people. My advice is to use language that focuses on function and not just form. That means focusing on the actual function that you're talking about, such as people who can get pregnant, people who can get other people pregnant, people who are at risk of testicular cancer, and so on and so forth. This is much more inclusive because there are intersex people who are born with a vagina but don't have a uterus or ovaries or an ability to menstruate. This is because some people that are born with a penis don't have testes. So it's much more inclusive to say what you actually mean than it is to use language that works around that. Right. And then eventually it's going to be people who have a Chipotle membership card and people who shop at Ross. And eventually it's just going to get so specific that we're just we're, we're going to get so specific that eventually we're just going to start shouting nouns at people. Here are some examples of my gender fluidity being a little bitch. Number one, feeling like a guy and visiting my relatives. I don't know if you know this, but I am not out to my family. Therefore, when I'm feeling like a guy, but I have to present super feminine in front of my relatives, it makes me feel icky inside. Also, gender dysphoria is a bit. Number two, when suddenly my gender decides to change right before bed. I'll just be vibing and then it'll be like, binder time. No, Michael, it's not binder time. It's bedtime. Binder time. Number three, in the freaking middle of the day. I'll be walking all happily along and then suddenly, boom, gender change. No, 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 now is not the time, Michael. I have a day to run. I don't need this dysphoria right now. Most of the time, I won't have the resources or capabilities to reduce the gender dysphoria because I didn't bring along with me a hat or a binder or makeup if it's the other way around. So it's a bitch. It's a real bitch. And so when the transgender community and the non-binary community, not the transsexuals, because those people just want to actually fucking transition and be left the fuck alone. When the new transgender community and the non-binary individuals say that this isn't a mental health issue or that we shouldn't consider it a mental health disorder anymore. Hearing this, hearing that some people actually think this way, you really don't think that we have something going on, that we have a problem going on, that there is an issue in this country. You don't see that because I see that clear as day. In fact, it's a little scary that more people do not see that. But it's concerning and it's really scary how this community, again, the new transgender community, not the old transgender community, which was pretty much just transsexuals, people like Blair White, Buck Angel, people that just wanted to transition and move on with their lives. When this is the community that actually gets the spotlight and people again like Blair White and Buck Angel get ignored, it's concerning the microphone, the size of the microphone, the scope of the microphone that these people have been given. And I say these people because, I mean, according to them, they can't even select a gender. So what am I supposed to say? What, where am I supposed to group them? They don't even have a group. I hope that after everything you've seen today, you understand why researchers and many individuals are concerned about what TikTok is doing to our youth and as you've already seen, to the adults of our country. It is not to be taken lightly, the headlines that are coming out. TikTok is a breeding ground for mental health disorders. Direct quote. TikTok is pushing dangerous content onto your children. Content that is not just confusing them, but encouraging them to cut off body parts. And if we were talking about general normal amputation, a normal parent would be concerned. So let's not take it lightly because it should not be taken lightly. Your children have access to dangerous content within minutes. Again, direct quote. Not only does TikTok give your children the tools to develop mental health disorders, but it also gives them the opportunity to learn how to self-diagnose by watching other people go through the same delusions. If you do not give your children the tools to succeed, somebody else, some stranger on the internet, will. Happily, because they have access to anything and everything on that application. And let me be clear, TikTok is not the devil. Unfortunately, though, it's an instruction manual. Well, that was crazy. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a like and a comment down below. But more importantly, 
What are your thoughts on this? What video upset you the most? Do you think the alphabet community has gone too far? If it's not your first time around here, let me know what you thought of this style of video. I know it's a little different from what we're normally used to around here, but thought we'd try something a little bit more laid back. Let me know if I should do a part two in the comments down below. I apologize for the delay in an upload. I'll be honest, life has just beat my ass in the last month, but we are back and I will see you soon.